Have you ever wondered how the giant steel cables that support bridges, elevators and colossal structures around the world are made? Behind every one of those cables is an impressive process that begins deep within a mine and ends on a massive production line, where the metal is transformed into an engineering masterpiece. From iron smelting to final braiding, thousands of meters of wire are combined with millimeter precision to create cables capable of supporting hundreds of tons for decades. Wire rope was first developed in the 1830s in the deep mines of Germany, when hemp ropes could no longer withstand the enormous loads. By replacing this old material, mining winches were able to descend hundreds of meters underground more safely, paving the way for large-scale industrial mining. Almost two centuries later, this material is used in every sector. Every year, the world consumes more than 10 million tons of steel cable used in infrastructure, heavy industry, oil and gas, maritime transport, and even renewable energy. Millions of elevators around the world rely on it, allowing skyscrapers to rise and define the skyline of modern cities. The amazing thing is the ratio between its small diameter and its enormous load-bearing capacity. The tightly twisted steel wire assemblies not only provide flexibility, but also distribute the force evenly along their entire cross-section. Thanks to this, a cable just a few centimeters thick can support hundreds of tons a true mechanical marvel of the modern world. The steel cable's journey begins in vast underground mines. Powerful drills blast holes in solid rock to introduce explosives. Controlled detonations fracture the rock, releasing blocks of reddish-brown iron ore. Giant hydraulic excavators then lift rocks weighing tens of tons and load them into mining trucks with capacities of hundreds of tons. These vehicles move continuously along specific routes to transport the ore out of the pit, in the storage area, the material is unloaded into hoppers and transported on conveyor belts that stretch hundreds of meters. There, vibrating screens and magnetic separators remove dirt, sand and other coarse impurities. The pre-processed ore is crushed into smaller fragments, making it easier to transport and smelt. Specialized rail cars and bulk cargo ships then take over, moving thousands of tons per trip. This entire cycle of extraction and initial processing operates non-stop, ensuring a constant supply for the steel industry and ensuring sufficient raw material for cable manufacturing worldwide. When the trains loaded with iron ore finally arrive at the steelworks, one of the most spectacular stages of the entire process begins. Smelting. Here, the metal extracted from the earth is transformed into steel, the material that will give rise to bridges, cables and structures capable of withstanding enormous stresses. Thousands of tons of ore, combined with recycled scrap metal, are introduced into an electric arc furnace the size of a multi-storey building. Inside, graphite electrodes the thickness of a log channel tremendous electrical currents that generate temperatures exceeding 1,600 degrees Celsius. At this level of heat, solid iron melts, turning into an incandescent liquid mass that glows with an orange glow, very similar to volcanic lava. This is the heart of the steelworks, an environment where metal takes on new life, but it's not enough to simply melt it. To obtain industrial-grade steel, engineers must carefully fine-tune its chemical composition. This is where metallurgical science comes in. Manganese is added, which improves strength, chromium and nickel, which increase durability and protect against corrosion, and silicon, which provides the flexibility necessary for the material to be deformed without breaking. At the same time, quicklime and fluorite are added. These compounds are not part of the steel, but they play a crucial role. When they react with impurities, they generate a layer of floating slag that acts as a natural filter. This layer collects unwanted debris and leaves a much cleaner, purer and stronger metal underneath. While all this is happening, the enormous electrodes keep the mixture in constant motion, preventing the heat from concentrating in a single point. In parallel, a system of digital sensors analyzes the temperature, density and proportion of chemical elements inside the furnace in real time. Only when the values match the exact specifications is the steel considered ready to move on to the next phase. In this way, each batch produced is the result of a perfect combination of technology, precision and control. A balance of fire and science that transforms simple minerals into the structural foundation of the modern world. Once the liquid steel reaches the required purity, it moves on to the casting stage. 
Unlike in the past, when steel was poured into batch molds, today steel is cast continuously in water-cooled copper molds. Upon touching the cold walls, the surface immediately solidifies while the core remains molten. Solidification progresses from the outside to the inside, forming solid bars several meters long, with a square or rectangular section. When they leave the mold, the ingots are still at thousands of degrees, so they are sent directly to the primary rolling mill. There, huge steel rollers apply enormous pressure that flattens and stretches the material with each pass. The thickness is reduced as the length increases, repeating the process through multiple rolling stations, transforming the steel into round bars, flat strips or slabs. High temperatures keep the steel malleable, preventing cracks and repeated mechanical forces reorganize its internal structure, making it more uniform, stronger and more stable before reaching the next stage. After hot rolling, the steel moves to the cold rolling line to be transformed into wires of precise dimensions. First, the glow rods are cooled using high-pressure water spray systems. They then pass through a series of rollers that exert enormous pressure, gradually reducing and lengthening the material. The profile of the steel, whether square, rectangular or round, is adjusted until the ideal shape for wire drawing is achieved. At this stage, the steel passes through a series of dies with increasingly smaller diameters. Each pass makes it finer, its surface smoother and its internal structure more uniform. Although this process is carried out at room temperature, it requires absolute control of the tensile force, speed and friction between the steel and the die. A small error can cause the wire to break, lose ductility or become out of size. In modern plants, laser sensors continuously monitor wire diameter, while automated systems adjust pulling force in real time. The result? High-strength steel wire coils with near-perfect precision and the durability needed for cable manufacturing. Once the desired dimensions are reached, the steel must pass its next test, heat treatment. The wire is introduced into furnaces where it is heated to between 400 and 700 degrees Celsius under a controlled atmosphere of gases. Heat reorganizes the metal's crystalline structure, giving it the ideal balance of hardness and flexibility, allowing it to withstand great stress without breaking. When the exact temperature is reached, the wire is rapidly cooled using pressurized air jets or industrial oil baths, securing its new metal structure. Next comes the anti-corrosion coating phase. Depending on the end use, each strand is covered with a protective layer, usually galvanized zinc or polymer. This protects the steel from moisture, salt water and corrosive chemicals. Before coating, the wire is cleaned with mild acid solutions to remove grease, dust and microscopic oxides. It is then dipped into a molten zinc bath or passed through a polymer coating system under precise temperature and pressure control. The coating must be uniform, firm and bubble-free as even a single imperfection can cause premature rusting during use. Even after receiving its protection, the wire is still not ready. It must undergo a final inspection where the most advanced sensors detect any defect, no matter how small. The diameter is measured with precision to fractions of a millimetre and the surface must remain perfectly smooth without ripples or deformations. If the slightest deviation is found, the wire is immediately removed from the line. Each sample is recorded, analysed and compared with technical standards. This inspection is not a simple checkup; it is the final selection of the steel warriors, the only ones who will be able to serve in the world's most demanding structures. Once approved, the individual wires are moved to the braiding line to form the final cable. The system holds dozens, sometimes hundreds, of coils mounted on large rotating frames. During operation, these frames rotate around a central axis, tensioning and twisting the wires into a predefined helical pattern. Before starting, the engineers define the type of central core, steel for ultra-resistant cables capable of withstanding extreme loads, or synthetic fiber, such as polypropylene, lighter and more resistant to corrosion. The wires are grouped into smaller bundles called strands and then several strands are wrapped around the core, forming the complete cable. Throughout the process, sensors monitor tension, twist angle and vibration in real time. If any thread stretches or loosens more than necessary, the system automatically corrects it. The braiding speed also remains constant. If it is too high, it can deform the wires. If it is too low, it reduces efficiency. When the first layer is complete, the machine continues rolling the following layers with millimeter precision. Each layer fulfills a different function. 
The exterior resists abrasion, the intermediate one supports the main load, the interior maintains structural stability. Thanks to this distribution, the final cable is flexible and extremely strong, capable of supporting hundreds of tons. Before use, the cable receives its final coat of special lubricant or oil, applied by immersion or high-pressure spraying. Flow and temperature are precisely controlled to ensure uniform coverage. The oil penetrates between the grooves of the braid, protecting the interior of the cable. Lubricants are typically mineral or synthetic oils with antioxidant and anti-corrosion additives, essential for cables operating in marine environments or under continuous dynamic loading. The cables are then subjected to extreme tests. Hydraulic tensile machines, cyclic bending equipment and micro-strain sensors test their strength to the limit. They are bent, stretched and subjected to pressure until they break, determining their true load-bearing capacity. Any microcrack or irregularity detected means immediate rejection. Only cables that pass all tests advance to the final stage. Finally, the approved cable is wound onto industrial reels using automated systems that regulate tension and prevent overlapping. A synchronized turntable with a cross guide accommodates each turn in its exact position. Cameras and sensors detect deviations and correct them in real time. The cable ends are secured with hydraulic clamps and traceability codes and batch data are printed directly onto the core. The finished coils are placed on steel or treated wooden pallets sealed with heat shrink film or waterproof canvas. Finally, automated cranes and forklifts transport the packages to the logistics area where they are loaded onto trucks or special containers with roll-proof compartments ready to leave the factory. From a simple piece of ore to a cable capable of supporting entire skyscrapers and bridges, every stage of this process demonstrates the strength and precision behind modern engineering. Every strand, every braid and every heat treatment tells a story of human effort, advanced technology and absolute control over materials. Because in the world of steel, the difference between success and disaster is measured in millimetres and in the perfection of a cable that must never fail.